Welcome to the Wasteland. In the Fallout universe, the world was forever changed on October 23rd, 2077, when the Great War broke out between the United States and China. Within the span of just two hours, most of the entire planet was rendered a radioactive wasteland, inhospitable to human life. While the vast majority of Fallout lore takes place in the post-apocalypse, today I thought we'd examine the pre-apocalypse. As the Fallout timeline has a rich alternate history universe divergent, yet strangely familiar to our own world's history. Before I start, I think it's best to clarify some things about the divergence of the Fallout timeline. The divergence is less of a specific event and more of a multitude of slight differences compared to our timeline. I won't go into all these differences, but for one example, within Fallout 3, there exists an item known as Lincoln's Voice, which appears to be a phonographic recording of Abraham Lincoln's voice. Despite no such recording existing in our timeline, with Lincoln being assassinated before any such recording could be produced. These small differences eventually culminate in a radical shift in the technology and culture of the world that occurs during the mid-20th century, following the Second World War. This is typically seen as the main point of divergence where the Fallout universe no longer resembles our own. And that's where we'll begin our investigation. Our first period in the Fallout timeline is the post-war period. Following immediately after the Allied victory in the Second World War, nothing much seems to have changed about the war itself, with the main difference being the general attitude towards atomic energy being more positive compared to our post-war period. The real big differences start around the 1960s, with the establishment of the United States Space Administration, essentially being this universe's analogue of NASA. The space race still occurs between the United States and the USSR, however there are a few key differences. In the Fallout universe, the first organism in space is reported by the United States Space Administration to have been a Persian cat named Mr. Pebbles. This is possibly just propaganda on the part of the pre-war American government, seeing as how in our universe we had sent both fruit flies and monkeys into space prior to the 1960s. On the topic of propaganda, the US also claims to have the first man in space, whereas in our timeline the Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to venture into space. In Fallout 3, we learn that in the Fallout timeline, that honour went to Captain Carl Bell of the US Space Administration. He's reported to have been the first man in space with his corpse on display in the Museum of Technology in the Capital Wasteland. Though this claim is disputed by both the USSR and China, however, Carl also has the dubious honour of being the first human to die in space, perishing on May 5th, 1961 when his capsule crashed back into the Earth. The final point to know about the space race is that the US still lands on the moon on July 16th, 1969 during their mission Valiant 11 using the Virgo 2 lunar lander, which we can find in Fallout 3's Museum of Technology. The rest of the early to mid 60s seemingly follow the same course as our own, more or less. The US still gets embroiled in the Vietnam War, it apparently goes about as well for them there as it does in our timeline. In the late 60s though, something very important to Fallout law happens. The United States reorganised itself from a nation composed of 50 states to one composed of 13 commonwealths, each made up of two or more states. We don't have a completely canon description of the commonwealths, however information from Joshua Sawyer does give us a general idea of the commonwealths. In this map we can see the breakdown of each commonwealth and its states that it's composed of, with the US being divided among the Colombian, East Central, Eastern, four states, Gulf, Midwest, New England, North, Northwest, Plains, Southeast, Southwest, and Texas Commonwealths. This has also led to the changing of the American flag to reflect this, with there now being 13 stars to represent each commonwealth. This would later be increased to 14, but we'll cross that road when we get to it. This new American flag is the one we see in most every Fallout game thus far, though the original 50 star flag does make occasional appearances. By the 2000s, the Fallout universe begins to more heavily diverge from our own, both technologically and culturally. In 2002, West Tech is founded and will go on to be one of the most important corporations in pre-war America, being the ones responsible for both the development of the US military's power armor and the forced evolutionary virus. Notably, in 2023, we get the first mention of a transistor in the Fallout universe. This is an important point as one of the key elements of the Fallout universe divergence is the changes involved in the development of vacuum tubes versus transistors in electronics technology. Vacuum tubes, also known as valves, are a type of electronic component that was commonly used in early computers and radio equipment. They work by using a vacuum to control and amplify electronic signals. In contrast, transistors are solid state devices that were developed in the late 1940s and quickly replaced vacuum tubes in electronic application in the 1960s and 70s. However, in the Fallout universe, the divergence from our own timeline occurred before the widespread adoption of transistors, leading to a world where vacuum tubes remain the dominant technology. 
This difference resulted in significant ramifications for the development of technology in the Fallout universe. In the Fallout games and other lore, vacuum tubes are often used in place of transistors and electronic devices, such as radio sets, computers, and robotics. One example is the water chip seen in Fallout 1's opening with its prominent vacuum tubes. From this and a few other examples, we know that by 2023, transistors did exist, though they were seemingly used far less than vacuum tubes. On the topic of technology, the 2030s and 40s appear to be the birth of much of the robotics industry that dominated pre-war America, with the first known publicly available robot, the Mr. Handy, being released in 2037 by General Atomics, with its household popularity being spurred on by the use to help clean up Mexico City after much of the city was damaged by an earthquake in 2042. It's in the same year that Robert House founds Robco, the Robotics and Software Corporation, with it becoming one of the most profitable corporations on the planet by 2047. However, all was not good in the 21st century as we head into. Starting around the 2050s, the world begins to take a drastic downward spiral, fueled, no pun intended, by the global economy's reliance on fossil fuels and later uranium. This would lead to the US becoming more aggressive in its foreign policy as an effort to control the dwindling supply of petrol, both domestically and abroad. This would lead them to invade Mexico in 2051 in an effort to secure the country's supply of oil, ultimately being successful in seizing Mexico's oil refineries and continuing their supply to the US, subsequently leading to a breakdown in Mexico's political stability. The energy crisis would only escalate the following year, with Texas oil fields becoming drained desolate husks in the middle of the desert. In April of 2052, the resource wars officially begin, when the European Commonwealth, which is a union of European states similar to our own EU, invades the Middle East beginning the Euro-Middle Eastern War. Similar to the US, the EC invades the Middle East due to the reliance on oil exported from that region. This almost immediately causes oil prices to skyrocket and many of the smaller states in the EC to go bankrupt. Following this, the United Nations begins to collapse as they remain unable to keep the peace between their member states, ultimately disbanding on July 26, 2052. The US is not spared from this either, as in 2053 the new plague emerges, a highly virulent disease. It sweeps across the United States, killing tens of thousands and prompting West Tech to begin research into their pan-immunity variant which would later become the forced evolutionary virus. The war between Europe and the Middle East continues as they are unaffected by the new plague, with Tel Aviv being destroyed by a nuclear weapon late into the year. This expands into a limited nuclear exchange in the Middle East by January of 2054. Spurred on by fears of both the Euro-Middle Eastern war and the new plague, it is in the same year of 2054 that the US government begins Project Safe House in collaboration with Vault Tech to create shelters for the nation's populace in case of nuclear war, what we now know as the Vaults. Things are relatively quiet for the next few years as the war in the Middle East drags on, but by 2060 the price of fuel has risen to the point where it was too precious to use on cars. This leads to the introduction of the first nuclear fission powered cars entering the market. The world's lack of oil is compounded by the end of the Euro Middle Eastern war in 2060, with the last reserves having been used up and the Middle East being drained of all reserves of oil. There's simply no point to fighting anymore. However, the war left both sides in a state of absolute ruin, and the European Commonwealth would eventually collapse, with its member nations tearing each other apart in the European Civil War, fighting for the last remaining resources left on the continent. During this time, the new plague continues to spread across America. Despite both governmental intervention and attempts by West Tech to produce a cure, by 2065 Robert House had reached the conclusion that a nuclear war was inevitable, and began to prepare both himself and Las Vegas for what will come after. In the same time, the first prototype power armor suits are in development. Using state-of-the-art fusion tech, this new development would prove invaluable in the coming years. 2066 holds arguably one of the most important events in Fallout history, that being the invasion of Alaska by the Chinese. The dwindling supply of oil in the world, combined with China's reliance on fossil fuels, led to this invasion after breakdowns in trade relations between the two great powers, with the US unwilling to export oil to a communist nation. In December, the People's Liberation Army invades Alaska and secures the United States oil reserves, prompting the US to declare war, officially beginning the Sino-American War. Canada is subsequently pressured into allowing the passage of US troops through its borders, eventually relenting and allowing the US military access. By 2067, the war was in full swing. It was in this year that the US would first deploy power armored troops on the Alaskan front in order to break through entrenched Chinese positions, encountering heavy armor such as the Chinese Chimera tanks. By 2069, the US continued to use its military dominance to pressure Canada into submission, exporting any and all natural resources available. Despite massive protests, the US continues their treatment of Canada as a little America. After several years of exploitation, the situation in Canada eventually reaches a breaking point in 2072. 
full-blown rioting occurring in many Canadian cities. After an attempt at sabotaging the US's main oil pipeline in Canada, the United States uses that as justification for the invasion and annexation of Canada, with occupied Canada becoming the newest territory of the United States, and the 14th star in their flag. The war in Alaska grinds on, largely becoming a stalemate of traditional trench warfare, similar to the First World War. Though American assault troops armed with T-45D power armor are able to break through hardened Chinese defenses, but they're beginning to become more bogged down by the effects of Chinese covert technologies, such as their stealth armor or pulse fields, or the effects of the bioweapons unleashed on the Anchorage front. One of the turning points of the war came in 2074, despite the US's claims to only be fighting to defend themselves and liberate Anchorage from communist occupation. American forces, including infantry and mechanized divisions launched the mainland counter invasion of China itself. This began to heavily strain even the mighty US economy as they were fighting a war on three fronts in Asia and Alaska against the Chinese and in Canada against partisan forces. Despite this massive counter invasion force deployed in Asia, the situation rapidly deteriorated into a stalemate, much like in Alaska, with American forces spread thin, fighting across the Shantou to the Gobi Desert and from Nanjing to Shanghai. By 2076, the Sino-American war had been going on for the better part of a decade, with neither side gaining a clear upper hand. With the Chinese still firmly dug into Anchorage and the American forces in Asia struggling to make headway, that was until the deployment of the first T-51B power armoured units, armed with the finest armour ever produced by the pre-war American Empire. The deployment of these new power armoured troops in June of 2076 began to change the course of the war. The new T-51B series performed exceedingly well against Chinese tanks, armoured vehicles and infantry. This eventually led to a breakdown in the Chinese war effort, with nations previously annexed by the Chinese revolting. However, the United States was unable to fully explore this advantage, as in 2077 riots broke out across the United States, a state of emergency and eventually martial law was declared, with US military forces being deployed on the domestic front. Power arm is now deployed against protesters in the United States for the first time. Veterans of China and Alaska now fight their own countrymen, the same weapons and armor used to fight the People's Liberation Army ultimately being turned on their own citizens. Following the breakdown of the Asian Front, the remaining Chinese forces in Alaska were cut off and unable to be resupplied or reinforced. The liberation of Anchorage was spearheaded by winterized T-51B power armored units, and in January of 2077 the Chinese were pushed out of Alaska. The campaign in mainland China was reinvigorated by the victory in Alaska and the deployment of the T-51 units. However, the effect did not last as American troops pushed deeper into mainland China Chinese resistance increased. By October, the situation transitioned from a rout into another stalemate. After over a decade of war, there was still no end in sight. Billions of dollars and thousands of lives had been spent in this war. And what ultimately came of it? Ultimately, the stalemate between the two great powers came to a head on Saturday, October 23rd, 2077, when it's believed that China launched the first nuclear warhead at the United States, first Chinese nukes hitting Pennsylvania and New York. The United States quickly reciprocated, but by then it was too late. The combined fallout of not only the warheads that impacted the US, but all those around the globe, the planet itself had become irrevocably changed, with many believing this to be the end of mankind. However, as players of the Fallout series, we know that this was only just the beginning of another bloody chapter of humanity's history.